what type of clarification can we offer so we can ease manufacturer confusion and concern? And just briefly, if you can highlight that, pass it on to Daniel and then to Joanne. You're asking for a, a brief highlight um, for something that I think has driven a lot of complexity in, um, in the way people think. Um, I think one of the things that is important to note, um, you know, when you look at what was done in the guidance that came out after the Part 11 piece, right? The agency clearly stated that, you know, we were going to put the uh, validation requirements that were in that original regulation and rule around Part 11 uh, under enforcement discretion, right? Because they realized that a lot of this already falls under the bucket of what's in the validation requirements of the, uh, you know, the predicate regulations, right? The, the rules are already established before that. So they weren't looking to add anything new or new additional burden. The other thing is, you know, and, and I get what part of the confusion comes from, and that may be a point of discussion later, you know, the systems are a lot more integrated and tied together now than they were before. So the idea of discerning what is that part 11 record, um, you know, it's it gets a bit more clouded. So, you know, one thing to have people really go back and, and look at is, you know, what is required on the part 11 record, right? What is it that's maintained? Um, it's very, it's a lot smaller, I think, than people assume it to be. And just because the system is collecting data that might then create a record or be formed uh, into a record for the agency or something that the part 11 piece applies to, doesn't mean that that is also a, a system that is under the part 11 uh, validation requirements. But I mean, we can go into how to best approach that a bit later, but I think the idea is to keep in mind that the focus was, you know, this isn't supposed to add any additional burden on what you already need to do. And secondly, the records that are required and the processes that are required are a lot more limited than I think people have been taking them to be. To go even a step further than that, we we'll talk about, and I think it's going to be an overarching thing that we talk about today, and that's the application of risk, risk benefit, risk management to your systems. As you look at applying Part 11 uh, moving forward, we acknowledge uh, the regulation. It's actually not Part 11 that says that you have to apply uh, that you have to apply quality or things to your software. It's 82070 in our case. It's to make sure that your software systems are uh, your non-design, non-system, their business process systems are uh, in some state of appropriate validated control. So it's about applying the the tennis to Part 11 to that. But that's also bounded by the ability to do that in a risk uh, under a risk framework and uh, apply appropriately, which is the entire purpose of the draft guidance is to identify that, yes, you do have the flexibility uh, to apply that risk framework. And you do have the ability to make a judgment call as to what what will Im what will have more of a bit risk either for the product business uh, to you and to justify that. And that's and then move forward appropriately with the uh, a standing um that then you can turn around and easily turn to say hey this was our decision making this was our process this is how we came to what we came to Joanne yeah those two points of clarification I think are important for manufacturers to understand uh, Cisco's first that we are as manufacturers interpreting way more applicability to part 11 then needs to and going back and figuring out exactly what part of the system records are in scope is an effort that's worth doing. It takes time, uh, but it is absolutely worth doing. And to Daniel's point, taking that risk-based approach and documenting it, it's that time up front, but it does clarify the scope of what we're doing and why we're doing it. And uh, that is effort worth spending. Great. Thank you all. This is a great, um, this is all great. Um, and you're making it really simple, at least for me here.